video for building a hydrogen generator. Before I used to play with mason jars uh, earlier prototype. is, well, bolting everything together. It works, but it's a little complicated to do, but it is doable. Corners are cut, so you have room for a bolt. Same on the other side. Uh, you notice we have three plates in here. One is the center one, is uh, has no charge whatsoever, not, not positive or negative. And a fourth switch plate was cut up and bent into tabs and bolted through the cap. Like I said, this works pretty good. However, I've always had problems with this mason jar, these mason jars because Right here, you can see, you can see it, that's loose, that was pretty good, so I was losing gas out of the little hole. Uh, they tend to get hot, and so the plastic melted away. When I was using steel lids, I still had problems because, well, this is, like I said, it's just problematic, and I always had to do maintenance to it. Now. When you hook it up, you simply need a positive and a negative wire. And that's all you need. And to run the gas into your intake, simply go to the air filter and run a hose. Drill a little hole, run a hose in, inside. Do not do not attempt to drill holes anywhere in your fuel injection system. My biggest problem is if, well, you're screwing around with your fuel injection system, and that's not good. We are completely outside of all mechanics, and we are next to the air filter, which is good. Very little chance of backfire. If it does backfire and the flame reaches this tube, the flame will go all the way up the tube, eventually to your gas unit, and it may explode. But very little, very little problem with that coming all the way out here. Now our new improved generator starts with very basic water bottle. These are beautiful because we already have stainless steel and we use this for our negative plate. However, you want to be careful in selecting your water bottle. This one I purchased on eBay but I don't like it. It was the perfect size. Very, very nice compact size. However, it's the cap that you want to look for. This cap, the handle is hollow inside. And right here, it's round. Very hard to tighten your bolt on a round surface like that. And Another barrier right there to drill through. So I decided not to use this one. This one is similar to the one right here. This is a 
a very good bottle made by Sub-Zero. It costs about $5 at Walgreens. Now all we have to do, the difference between that one and this one is the cap. This one's already been modified, but we'll show you what's done here. First off, we cut away part of the handle so you have access. That's why the handle, you have to make sure that the handle is solid. Second of all, flat surface, surface right here. So when you're tightening down a bolt, you have a nice flat surface. Everything is almost guaranteed to be airtight. Now there's only three things that you have to do to the cap. Cut away part of the handle, like I said, and drill two holes. One hole and two holes. The first hole is for a bolt, an average stainless steel bolt. As long as you can find, as you can see, this does not go to the bottom. It does go down about halfway, but it does not touch the bottom. Very important, you cannot touch the sides or the bottom. Uh, this one has a few washers on the end. That's for extra electrode surface. You don't need this, but it is nice to have. You simply drill the hole, run the bolt through it, and I don't know if you can see in there. We just simply bolt it to the cap. Second hole is you just need a spot to run a tube, a little plastic tube. This one has uh, something for the tube to fit on. In the past, I've just simply shoved the tube in the hole and it has worked. But on this one, I wanted to get a little more fancy. And so now we can easily remove the tube if we need to. The other purpose, the other purpose for the bolt, supply power. Put that in there, wire that up, and simply bolt it to the bolt. And just add a little baking soda, about a teaspoon per 12 ounces. This is about a 16 ounce unit, so I would add a tablespoon. Here's what your assembled product looks like. Here wire, a simple hose clamp, and you attach a negative wire. And again, you attach a tube. Again, we have all this fuel injection stuff that we do not want to mess with. So we are far away from the fuel injectors as physically possible on this model. And we simply, there was already a little hole here. All you got to do is just shove the other end of the tube through the hole and that's all the hookup you need to receive the gas. Wiring it isn't too complicated but because we have computers and whatnot we don't want to fry our computers accidentally so we're using a relay switch which is connected directly to the battery. And we do that with a relay relays generally look like this this is a 30 amp relay you have one wire coming off your ignition and one to ground off of these two sides doesn't matter which one you use as long as you use these two sides one off the ignition and one ground the other two one from the battery and the other one goes to the bottle. It does, again, it doesn't matter which one you use 
as long as you're using these two. Center one, ignore it, leave it alone, don't need it. Power is supplied to the relay from the fuse box. Find a fuse that only works when the ignition is on. Do not use one when the uh, when the radio is on, when the accessories are on. Only when the ignition is on. Reason being, you could build up hydrogen inside the air filter and when you finally turn on the ignition you could get too much hydrogen in there and you might do damage to your engine. So we just have ignition wire with a 2 amp fuse and run to the ground and then ground that to the car and then one wire from the battery and the other one to the bottles and that's all we need when you fill up your bottle I would fill it up to about here do not fill it all the way up to the top because the water will come out the come out the tube and into your uh, intake system all right that's it